Now we are going to have grand rounds for interactive case presentation and discussion. Uh, these are actual cases that we've been seeing at our hospital, Maudia Children's Hospital. And I hope you all enjoy it as much as we did enjoy treating them. So, this is a nine month old boy. He came with recurrent cough and cold. More in the morning for the past one and a half months associated with fever. Every time he was treated with oral antibiotics, had to be admitted 15 days ago, he was treated with IV antibiotics, nebulization oils, I told you know, standard treatment. Everybody has to do. He was discharged of salbutamol, meter dose inhaler, but there is no improvement. There is no contact with TB or there is no family history of asthma. So this is what he has come with. Written cough and cold, more in the mornings for one and a half month associated with fever. So that's his present uh, history that he's come with. On examination, he has a respiratory rate of 34 per minute. Continuously keeps his mouth open, has a congested nose. There are no wrong eye and tonsils are normal. Other systems are normal in this time. Does this child have asthma? No. This child doesn't have asthma. Adenoids. Somebody says adenoids. He's keeping his mouth open, so it must be adenoids. Yes, he does keep his mouth open, so he is not able to breathe through the mouth, I mean through the nose. So, suggest that the airway above the mouth is obstructed. Either this is due to adenoid, sinusitis or rhinitis. So our possible etiologies are sinusitis, allergic rhinitis or adenoid. Which of the three? Adenoid. So asthma is less likely. Why asthma is less likely? There is no family history, there is no contact, cough. Reason is predominantly nighttime in asthma. Here the cough is more in the morning. So this is a nighttime cough asthma. This child has morning symptoms. So he should improve with beta. If he's on salvitamol, he should have improved. His symptoms are not improved. There's no family history of allergy, and in spite of non improvement, he still has no wrong type. So this tells us that this is not asthma. Out of the three, which one? Sinusitis, adenoids, allergy, rhinitis. Everyone says adenoids. Because the team may is keeping mouth open, so it's adenoids. Antibiotics are not open. Antibiotics are not open. Allergic rhinitis. Why do you say allergic rhinitis? Early morning cough, cold, allergic rhinitis. Okay. So this could be the thing. Now, adenoids are usually associated with enlarged tonsils and patients should have snoring as a symptom, post often. Allergic rhinitis should not have any diurnal variation. It should not be only in the morning. It can be any time of the day. It is associated with a lot of sneezing. Allergic rhinitis is one symptom that you must always ask is sneezing. So it's associated with a lot of sneezing and it should not cause respiratory distress. So again, allergic rhinitis is completely out. Sinusitis post-nasal drip can cause your early morning cough and mouth disease. So in this child? Sinusitis. Sinusitis. So how do you prove this is sinusitis? Yes, we have to do an X-ray of the paranasal sinuses. So X-ray of the paranasal sinuses, in this child, opaque maxillary sinus was there confirming the diagnosis of sinusitis. So falsely this child was hospitalized, falsely the child had received an MDI spacer with salbutamol. So this was not asthma. So not all restlessness or cough are asthma. Treatment of sinusitis? Amoxicillin. He is already receiving antibiotics. Okay, right antibiotic, right amount of duration. So only antibiotics? Decongestants. So decongestants are very essential. Otherwise that thing will not drain out. So you need to give antibiotics, antihistaminics, decongestants and anti-inflammatory. So even if there is no fever, you have to give all that. So this is the treatment. So antibiotics, drug of choice, amoxicillin. Antihistaminics, 
Your third generation anti-histaminics work much better. No sedation. Decongestants, be a little careful when you use decongestants because of the risk of arrhythmia and the risk of hypertension. And anti-inflammatory, any of the ones that you are comfortable with. Treatment is that. So not all reading and cough call is LRPI. Not all wheezing is asthma. In fact, 20% of wheezing episodes are due to sinusitis. Asthma is proven only when your peak flow rises by 20% with a proper dilator. And if there is no improvement in the peak flow, then consider another diagnosis. So this was a case of... At 9 months, maxillary sinuses are there. Your frontal sinuses are just developing. So you can still get maxillary sinuses. But in kids, Pediatric age, PFR is a little difficult. Uh, around 4 years or later you could do that. So you cannot do PFR in children less than that. But older children you will be able to do that. You have a peak flow meter. So we are given salpetamol and then how do you take If your uh, yeah, symptoms should improve. If the symptoms are not improving, then it is not. Decongestant in 9 months old. Yeah, now cough syrups in 9 months old. My last uh, chapter that I have written for GPA, cough syrups in nine, uh, no cough syrups to be used in children less than two years as per your FDA because of increased incidence of sudden infant death syndrome. So your government body, though in India it's still not, the US FDA does not approve use of any cough syrup in children less than two years, including your antihistaminics, your decongestants, your cough suppressants. The only thing that you are allowed to use is bronchodilator and maybe septicin if you have allergic rhinitis as a diagnosis. Nothing else can be used in children less than two years. So the only thing that you can use is anti-inflammatory, closing paracetamol. What about Ambroxol? Ambroxol also should not be used in children less than two years. No cup remedy apart from a bronchodilator can be used. Bronchodilator only if the child is using it. So, in effect, you will end up using only paracetamol. Antibiotics are prescribed at KM also. Pardon? Give me two years KM, prescriptions are there. Agreed, but you should not be prescribing. People are not aware of that fact. So, this is an FDA recommendation that has come in October 2009. Maybe by the time it will trickle down to our... And India still has not recommended that. But there are enough case reports to tell us not to use them. How long to give antibiotics? How long to give antibiotics in sinusitis would be 7 to 10 days. Dispensed with the child at return. Yeah, but he was not decongested. Okay, so you need to give steam inhalation, you need to give anti-inflammatory. Saline nasal drops will help them. Is that recommendation is supported with Javadon evidence or? The evidence that FDA has given is in fact on level 3 evidence of not using these drugs and they are seriously thinking of stopping use of antihistaminics and decongestants in children less than 12 years also. Though they have not come out with that recommendation. But they are seriously thinking about that. In fact, in US, all the drug companies now have to put a label on their uh, drug bottle not recommended for use in children less than 2 years. So just like smoking, tobacco companies have to put, smoking is bad for health. All these cough syrup medications now have a label saying that not recommended in children less than two years. So by the time it comes to India, it's still time. We're still using India's Steam inhalation in younger children. Steam inhalation in younger children, if they are comfortable with it, you can give them. And provided you are sure that they will not get burned, then you can give them. Yeah, so you can use that regular steam that is, you don't need not boil the water, you can just use a steam and switch it up. Now this is case 2, he's a 4 month old boy, cough and mild cold since 7 days, increased rate of breathing since 3 days, there's no fever. Okay, so this is what you like. Can it be asthma? Can it be bronchitis? There's no fever, so this is viral. 
Why do you call me breathlessness? So either it's bronchitis or it's bronchiolitis or it's viral pneumonia. Right? Our examination heart rate is 110, respiratory rate is 52 without chest distraction. There are no distractions. Bilateral hyperadrenaline note over arm feels with obliteration of cardiac dullness, bilateral complication. This is bronchiolitis. Diagnosis is bronchiolitis. How should this child be managed? Oxygen. Now, we discuss bronchiolitis, we say it's a problem of inspiration, oxygen is a problem, so they have to take oxygen. If there is a wheezing, we have to give a bronchodilator. If there is no wheezing, no bronchodilator. Because the child is breathing so fast, 52, he is losing a lot of water in the atmosphere. So hydration, so you have to give him fluids. So treatment is only fluids and oxygen of bronchodilator. Yes, because you are losing a lot of water, so you can give humidified oxygen. If you just give plain oxygen without humidification, it tends to create more dryness of the air tract. So you don't want to do that. So humidified oxygen. So oxygen is needed, and in view of hypoxia, increased loss of breathing, losses of water. So you need to give hydration in these children. What about bronchodilators? Usually bronchodilators are not recommended in bronchodilators because your beta agonist receptors are only on the bronchi. So they will not really help. But some of the bronchodilators may also have little bronchial inflammation. So you may